Powered by Mark Harvey Levine. A lab with a few computers and lots of papers strewn about. Howard, mid-twenties, sits at a table with three plates in front of him. He's making three sandwiches and keeps switching items from one sandwich to another. An older man, approximately in his sixties, bursts into the room. He is impeccably dressed, confident, and filled with calm fury. Howard? Yes? Uh, how weird. Can I help you? Well, what are you doing? Um, I'm trying to perfect the BLT. What? The sandwich, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. There's no protocol for them. I'm trying to perfect the process. The key is percentage of tomato. At least that's my theory. And oh. smacks him on the head. What did you do that for? Who are you? The idiot, who do you think I am? Don't you recognize me? No, although you do look weirdly familiar. <sighs> Perfecting the BLT. Ugh. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not what this equipment is for. Um, we're still studying gravity. We're doing important work here. I'm on my lunch break, okay? And you asked me what I was doing, so I told you, please don't take away our funding. I'm not here to take away your funding. Look, you still don't know who I am? I mean, have I changed that much? Uh, I don't know. When was the last time I saw you? Well, oddly, uh, that's a difficult question to answer. So, this is what I was doing on March 3rd, 1997, perfecting the BLT. Oh. Wait, you were... <gasps> You're me! You're me from the future! I've come back to visit myself! Very good! You're very smart, you <laughs> idiot! Hits him again. Ow! Why do you keep hitting me? Where are you supposed to be right now? I don't know. I... Lunch. <laughs> Lunch? With, with Susan McElligot. Susan. Oh. Oh, my God. I totally forgot. <laughs> exactly. I came all the way back through time to remind myself to go to lunch. Hits him again. Another brilliant deduction. Oh, you really going to have to stop hitting me. But go, you're going to be late. No, wait. There's so much I want to ask you. Me, why are you here? To make you go to lunch. And for God's sakes, eat something. I, I can't believe I was this skinny. But why is it so important that I go to lunch? Am I going to stop something terrible from happening? Save thousands of lives? Oh, no, no, no. Look, I ran into Susan McEgel I got last month. Uh, last month, my time. We were at the Temporal Physics Conference. Temporal physics? Time travel. Hmm. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, you, I, we discovered it. I was the keynote speaker. Wait, I discovered time travel? Yes, <laughs> when we weren't uh, revolutionizing the sandwich industry, we were studying hmm. gravity and accidentally discovered time travel. Wow. Uh, well, oddly, we still don't know what makes gravity work, but there I was at the conference in 15th century France, and, and Susan, co Susan comes up to me at the reception, 63 years old and still stunning. Stunning! Mm. A professor at Princeton married with three beautiful children. Really? What about us? We were never married. Oh. And Susan says, you know, I was really starting to fall for you back then. <laughs> she was? She is? Until that time you stood me up for lunch on March 3rd, 1997. Oh, God. Now, I'm breaking about 12 different federal laws, coming back and talking to myself, but I don't care. Now, go. You still have plenty of time to make it. Woo her. Woo right. her. Right. I'm out of here. Yes. He grabs his coat and is nearly out when he is pushed back by a middle-aged man, Howard in his 40s to be exact. He's a mess, wrinkled clothes, unshaven, nervous. He speaks very fast. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, no. Who the hell are you? Hello, I'm us, age 43. Don't go to that lunch, Howard. Wait, you're us? Uh, me? Yeah. Yes, after we married Susan McGilligott. We married her? Ah, oh, it worked! Uh, All too well. 20 years from now, you'll have married her 16 years ago. They pause and do the math on that one. It, then, was, a, it was a lovely ceremony. 
We got married at an Incan temple. The reception was Nero's Rome. <laughs> he was nuts, but he knows how to throw a party. Yeah. And everything went to hell. Isn't, isn't she everything we thought she would be? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Faithful wife, great mother, makes a mean fusilia salmon. Mm -hmm. Look at me, both of you. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> you look like crap. Right. Yeah. Yes, see, he's not afraid to tell the truth. I'd admire that trait in me if I still had it. Oh, what are you talking about? Look at this, bags under my eyes. Do my clothes look slept in? They are. Is that a sandwich? Oh, I'm not sure yet. Doesn't Susan love us anymore? Of course she does. She's completely devoted. She gave up working to raise the kids. She gave up everything. I have kids? Yeah. Two, they're back in the machine. I have to drop them off in Elizabethan England later. Some drama class Susan signed them up for. What the hell happened? You! You happened! Ah! Look at you! There's a lifetime of anger and regret written all over your face. I sure as hell didn't want to end up like that, so I went to that lunch. I did woo Susan. God, how I wooed her. Flowers, dinners, poems. I wrote her a poem. I wrote a poem? It was awful, believe me. But I discovered something. Write a girl a good poem and she likes you. Write a girl a bad poem and she's yours for life. So let me get this straight. Oh, but wait, what, what about Susan? Well, I knew if I didn't marry her, I'd regret it. I mean, duh, I already have. So I did, and I hate it. I do? No, I don't. Who knows how I... She's sweet and kind and loving, and I am a nervous wreck. I can't argue with her or fight with her. Or she might leave me. Then I'll regret it for the rest of my life, won't I? And we wouldn't want that, would we? Okay, relax. Let's just. She doesn't care about science anymore. She left that to me. She decorates. She wants to redo the bedroom in peach with matching dust ruffles. How oh, weird. Weird. I'm hamstrung. Every decision I make, am I going to be visited by the ghost of Christmas future here? Who's going to smack me and tell me I, I should have taken that job in Denver? Or I should have named the kid Kevin. I should have ordered the chicken. But listen, I, I was... No, no, you listen. Better yet, you. Listen. Hell with him. Don't go to that lunch. Stand her up, otherwise she turns into Betty Crocker and we go slowly crackers. Blow her off. So, wait, now, now I don't go to lunch? Look, if you know what's good for you, you'll realize you don't know what's good for you. Ah, you can avoid his mistakes. Look, all you have to do is Don't just... leave this room until two o'clock. Just, just tell her that- Don't tell her a thing, forget her. You'll never find anyone like her. Thank God. Wait a second. I wanted to go. I planned on it. I just forgot. Well, your subconscious was telling you something. Listen to it. Look, I, I don't want to end up like you, <clears throat> but I don't want to end up like you either. Since in one future I went to lunch and the other I didn't, we can scientifically prove that no matter what I do- We're screwed. Right. No. <laughs> we can prove that no matter what, I'm always going to, to wonder- Oh, oh, oh you don't have to wonder. Just, just keep going back until we get it right. I don't think so. It didn't work with him. Look at him. Middle-aged coward poses in all his disheveled glory. He was the first iteration. Look, if we- Yeah, but how many times will I have to go back until I have the perfect life? We're gonna drive ourselves crazy here. You know what? I'm gonna go have that lunch with Susan. No, don't. I didn't say I was gonna marry her. I'm just gonna have lunch with her. 
After that, maybe a movie sometime, all right? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late. Howard exits. Great, my life all over again. Ah, don't worry, he'll do better this time. He'll walk through that door with Susan on his arm, happy and kind. I should have arrived before you. I just didn't want to stand here and watch me hit myself. Look, it's, it's going to be all right. Look, if I know me, I should be showing up any second now. <laughs> By the way, shouldn't, shouldn't you have disappeared when I was created? I mean, you won't run into her at the conference now. Yeah, but if I disappear, then then I won't come back to remind myself, which means that this whole- Luckily, at that exact moment, Howard comes back in. Dressed completely differently, he looks great. Hey, guys. Right where I left you. <laughs> How was lunch? Lunch was five years ago. I just had to come back and get something I left in the office. How's, I mean, did you marry? I did. Hey, don't worry. Everything's fine. See, I had a great time at lunch. Uh, Susan was very nice, but the food, the food was incredible. So Susan bought me the restaurant with her time travel money. You're going to love it. People come in. I feed them. They go out satisfied. No physics, no regrets. We're both happy. <laughs> Susan invented time travel? Sure. Once I told her it was possible and gave her my notes, it was a cinch. Turns out <laughs> she's a lot smarter than us. <laughs> me. <laughs> but oddly, there's always one thing that bugged me. The BLT. I still can't get it right. I think I had it right here in 1997 before you guys barged in. They look at each other. They each pick up a sandwich. Too much tomato. Oh, no. Not enough tomato. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> he lifts it like a waiter. Gentlemen, if you'll excuse me. I've got a huge table of 10th century Vikings, and believe me, you don't want to keep them waiting. <laughs> Order up. He exits. Blackout. 